Hello everyone, this is Sebastian McMahon from IA Financial Group and I'm here with another edition of the weekly economic review this week, uh, for this time for the week ending February 5th, 2021. As usual, I'm joined by our chief economist, Clément Gignac. Good morning, Clément. Good morning. So we had a very uh, interesting week on the markets again. Uh, if you look at the, the table that I present here, it's almost the mirror image of what we had recently. So we had uh, equity at, for equities at least because bonds are still facing some headwinds, but equities uh, still gains of about on average 5%. So NASDAQ was up close to 6%, uh, TSX, S&P 500 and emerging countries above 4, uh, EFI uh, about 3%. So, uh, of course, in the U.S., we've had a stronger rebound because this is this was the epicenter of the volatility in the last few uh, few weeks. Uh, the bond market, the long index, down one percent on the week. Uh, so, uh, still, uh, we're still seeing these inflation uh, expectations creeping into the bond market, and also expectations for stronger growth down the road. So, uh, year to date, minus one point six for the universe index and minus four point fifteen percent for the long index. Uh, price of oil oil higher on the week uh, above $55 so strong momentum there the US dollar was also stronger on the week so that hurt the Canadian dollar that hurt the euro and that also hurt the price of gold which uh, slipped it below its support of $1800 on the week year to date we're down 5.5% for the price of gold so uh, let's start with COVID. So I will still be presenting the cases, but now I want to focus more on vaccination because this is one of the main vectors of, uh, of economic growth uh, in 2021. So on the left, you see that restrictions and vaccination are helping the number of cases. Uh, you see that on the left, pretty much every country in the world is seeing a downward uh, trajectory. But on the right, this is where you see disparity, and this will be very important for uh, how growth happens in 2021. Uh, the divergences that we'll see. As you can see, Canada is pretty much on the bottom at 2.7% of the population that has been vaccinated. So it's the red stick that you see on the right. Uh, on top, you have Israel first, uh, United Kingdom at 15%, United States at 10%. You have uh, Denmark, Ireland, so lots of European countries. So of course, in Canada, we don't produce any vaccines. Uh, they're produced in the States, they're produced in Europe. So we're seeing this protectionism creep in and it will be very important important uh, to, uh, to, for how the recovery happens in 2021. In Canada, we're starting to see uh, lagging in our economic data, and it should continue for a bit as uh, we are behind in the pace of vaccination compared to other countries. So we do still see bright prospects for the Canadian economy, but uh, maybe for Q1 and Q2, uh, the United States and other countries around the world, where vaccination is uh, faster, uh, should be outperforming. Canada. So that's a headwind that we're facing here. Uh, focusing on the US, uh, the economy is actually doing pretty well. Uh, on the left, you have the manufacturing sector. So the orange line is the ISM manufacturing index. So it's uh, close to the tops of the last uh, 50 years, uh, 15 years. So uh, doing pretty well there. Uh, industrial production should be also benefiting from that. So there's uh, lots of uh, room for more gains from the industries in the US. On the right, the services sector, of course, less restrictions, more vaccination, it's helping the services sector in the States. Uh, so it's actually doing it. It has some strong momentum now in Canada. Now, if you look at the data, this is the data from November. There's always a, a lag from uh, when the data is, is published. Uh, Canada GDP year over year, we're at minus 2.8% now. It was expected to be minus 3.2%. So it was actually a bit better. Uh, December, we should still have a positive print for GDP according to StatsCan. But and now uh, the, the, li the labor market data that we're seeing are are showing that we should be slowing down. And on the right, we still see that the Canadian output gap should still close maybe at the end of the year, but there are some risks linked to vaccination and it's showing here in the uh, the jobs report. Um, the, the, the blue line on the left is the US labor market. So of course, more gains in the last uh, decade. Uh, fell the when, when COVID happened, lost many jobs, just like Canada, which is the red line, and then both rebounded. Uh, the story the last few months was that the Canadian labor market was rebounding much, much faster than the US. Uh, if you remember the last few months, uh, I was always repeating that it was 79% of the lost jobs in Canada that had been regained. Now with this month's uh, 
labor market report we lost 213,000 jobs in January alone so we're down to 71 percent of the lost jobs and the blue line as you can see is going sideways in the US so there's loss of momentum but at least uh, it's not going the right the wrong direction so we're at 56 percent of lost jobs uh, regained here for for the US Unemployment rates are moving in different directions. In the U.S., we're at 6.3. We were at 6.7% uh, in December. In Canada, we were at 8.6. Now we're up to 94 So not going in the right direction for the unemployment rates. And it has a lot to do with the two biggest provinces, Quebec and Ontario. They both lost many jobs in uh, January, uh, minus 98,000 for Quebec, and the unemployment rose. The employment rate rose by 2%. It went from 6.8 to 8.8, and in Ontario, we lost 154,000 jobs in January. It went from 9.6 to 10.2. So the two biggest provinces are not going in the right direction. Good news is that if you look at the red line on the left-hand chart, uh, Canada excluding Quebec and Ontario, actually employment is going higher, but the two biggest provinces with the strictest restrictions or weighing on uh, on the economy. So when we will reopen the economy, of course, the services sector will reopen. We will regain many of these jobs, but in the short term, that's still a very strong headwind that the Canadian economy uh, is facing. So that wraps it up for the economic part. So now for the financial markets, I hand it over to you, Clement. Thank you. So hoping that Canada will fix its problem with the uh, vaccine, I have access to doses because uh, uh, clearly they have a, a divergence of uh, performance between Canadian and U.S. economy uh, right now and look like to, to be maintained for, for a few additional weeks or, or, or months. We will see. Okay, shift to the capital market. In fact, the, you know, uh, Wall Street, uh, S&P continue to have a new time high. Of course, we have a great earnings. Uh, uh, but uh, clearly, to illustrate uh, that we have uh, people optimistic, not to mention some exuberance, maybe, uh, and that is the relationship here between the S&P index and the margin debt. So uh, people uh, are so confident about stocks uh, and the upside uh, on stocks, they, they do not hesitate to, to tap, in fact, and borrow, which is uh, always risky eh, to, to, to borrow, to, to buy stocks. But this is not the first time. This is not the last time and interest rate is so low that uh, it, it, it not too much painful. So we will see. On the right side, uh, no other illustration uh, regarding maybe some exuberance. This is the link here uh, on the first slide, uh, top right, between the S&P uh, Grow Index, which is the blue curve, and the dotted red curve is the uh, index of the IPO. Uh, and that is, they have a great returns, uh, in fact, uh, uh, over the over the last 12 months uh, and what is interesting or scary let's say is the second chart bottom right uh, it's the percentage of IPO which uh, would company have negative earnings believe it or not 80 percent of company these days going public uh, have no earnings at all so the last time that we have seen that uh, you have to be back to uh, 1999 uh, so in the dot-com area so it's not necessarily a bubble as we speak uh, because we have great earnings, earnings recession is over. We will talk about that a little bit more next week uh, when we'll make the postmortem. But le let's say that uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, we have a situation that people uh, are very optimistic. On next slide, uh, in fact, just to illustrate the, the GameStop uh, story. Uh, so uh, now we seem to be deflated. In that case, it was a bubble. I think we can talk about that, uh, Sebastian, that this uh, brick and mortar uh, companies uh, have suddenly a significant market cap. At some point, they have reached uh, 25 billion. So you be believe it. So, uh, and now uh, with uh, the restriction of uh, trading by Robin Hood uh, and uh, the fact as well that uh, you have uh, uh, some regulators in, in, in the picture now. Madame Yellen want to meet regulators to talk about this situation. And probably the rule of the game could change because uh, you have all this... Uh, uh, trading uh, or let's say application that you can trade for free uh, and uh, the business model they rely on uh, orders for payment flow so uh, the fact that the payment for order flow excuse me so uh, that's explained right in UK it's prohibited but in US you can do that it's for a um, few years now and they could create some problem maybe so we will see uh, maybe we have nothing illegal here 
But is it the best interest of the clients? This is the question the regulator ask uh, themselves. So stay tuned. I think that uh, uh, more more to come in the coming weeks or month. Next slide. Uh, let's shift uh, on to illustrate this exuberance that we have seen, but as well the breadth, the breadth of the stock market uh, is a concern because the first slide is the S&P 500, uh, it's with a log scale if you want, and uh, at the bottom, and this is an history uh, over the last five decades, and notice right now you have around 30% of uh, the components of the S&P 500, who beat the index, so, uh, or if you prefer the opposite, 70% of uh, S&P 500 components uh, uh, underperformed the index uh, over the last 12 months. Uh, the last time you have seen such a ratio uh, solo, 30% beat, uh, was uh, in 1999 again, so in the dot com. So this is a concern because people rush, uh, they go with Tesla, they go with green stocks, they go with uh, uh, with uh, the, 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 the some FANG stocks, uh, but at the end of the day, the breadth is not as good. So our recommendation is always uh, f uh, to be diversified, to scale down, maybe take profits, uh, uh, and uh, maybe consider uh, financial stocks, energy stocks provide good dividend uh, because uh, if you go too much concentrated, you have a risk. So we will see, uh, but uh, hoping it's not a, uh, an indication of market top, but uh, clearly using the past as a guide, uh, it's not good. Uh, it was uh, followed by some correction. So uh, things to watch, I will say, uh, Sebastian. Next slide to finish. Uh, inflation uh, next week uh, I think we will have an update on inflation US you will talk about that Sebastian but in the meantime notice the yield curve notice the bond market the bond market you see on the right side a two year curve you have the amount to go which is the blue curve and the pink is the the current and notice they continue to increase the long rate so central banks control short rates but the long rates is not controlled by central banks despite the fact they have a quantitative easing and notice the upward pressure two reason you have the stimulus uh, campaign vaccination but you as well maybe a uh, uh, upward rev revision uh, upward pressure on uh, inflation uh, expectation so this is something uh, to follow very closely and I think Sebastian you have a lot of things to watch next week including uh, uh, this uh, CPI to be came out from US back to you sure well next week yes we do have uh, the, an update on the CPI in the US uh, it should be at 1.5 percent higher year over year in January and I just remember that uh, we will start entering uh, the very favorable year over year comparison period in the next few months so March April we should have inflation creeping up at 2.53 and somewhere been calling for 4% year over year uh, when you look at the comparison. So we'll see how the market reacts on that. We'll see how central banks react to that, but uh, we should see a clear acceleration in the next few months. Uh, also in the States, we'll have the Joe's job, uh, job openings re re report. As we mentioned many times in the last few uh, weeks and months, the labor market in the States is going sideways. At least it's not going the wrong way, but there's still opening new jobs so uh, that, that's a good uh, that's a good sign and in Canada we'll have wholesale trade sales they should be in for, for December so we still have uh, some momentum in December according to the data but starting in January we should be fa facing a few uh, tougher months let's say for the Canadian economic data so that wraps it up for the week uh, ia.ca slash economy remains your go-to web page. If you haven't done so, you can always subscribe. Uh, as I've mentioned many times in the last few weeks, if you want a, a PDF version of this presentation, you can always write at economics at ia.ca. We'll forward that to you um, uh, happily. Uh, so uh, that's it for this week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Gignac, for your uh, participation. You're welcome. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. You too. For those who follow the Super Bowl, happy Super Bowl. And we'll be back next Friday with another edition of the Weekly Economic Review.